G'day guys, JC from Flying with Jace. Hey, today I wanted to talk about SAR and SAR time for recreational pilots. This one's aimed more at those of you getting out, learning your uh, navigation phase of your training, but also for the folks that get out there day by day, do a bit of navigation, go places, uh, and maybe either aren't as familiar with the SAR time procedures or don't actually know what it is. So let's hook in and have a look. First of all, the basics. What is a SAR time? Okay, a SAR time, it's a time, it's in UTC time, so Zulu time, it's nominated by you to an organisation called SENSAR, which is the Central Search and Rescue Organisation. It's a government agency, they've got access to helicopters, search and rescue aircraft, the whole box and dice. These are the guys that are going to come and find you and save you if you have an accident. Now, as I said, the time is nominated by you. Uh, for a location nominated by you and search and rescue action will commence if you don't cancel your SAR time by that time. So this is a very, very handy tool. Uh, if we're going places, we can use it to say, if I'm not there by 000 Zulu, start looking for me. Okay, what happens if it expires? Well, I've already alluded to the fact that they come looking for you. The first thing they do uh, when it expires for 30 minutes, they'll start trying to phone you. Okay, you, uh, you'll be nominating a phone number and a contact, and they'll start trying to phone you. Hey, have you forgotten to cancel it, or are you okay, or what's going on? Uh, if your SAR time was for arrival at, say, Roma, they might send the police out to the airfield or ring someone to say, has this aircraft of this rego arrived there? Is it there? Uh, they'll start calling you on the radio they'll get other aircraft in the air to call you on all of the appropriate frequencies. You know, it might be 121.5. It might be the area frequency. If where you're going has a CTAF, it might be the CTAF frequency. So they'll start calling you. If they still haven't been able to at least work out where you are in that, uh, in that 30 minutes, uh, it escalates there to a proper distress phase where things are put in place to start looking for you. They may start using airliners uh, to see if they can see you. They may start launching search and rescue aircraft to physically look for you. Um, if people can pick up a distress beacon in that time, then they, they, they may be able to marry that distress beacon up to you. Hopefully you've got a, a EPIRB in the aircraft or a PLB with you that uh, <clears throat> that's pinging the satellite and has already made them aware of your situation. But if all else fails, you, you may have the SAR time and that may launch the search and rescue crew to come and look for you. Okay. A key part of that is make sure that the information you've put into your SAR time, and we'll look at that shortly, makes it easy for them to find you. It's no good just putting SAR time for arrival Roma. You know, it's handy if you can tell them where you've come from and what route you're going to take when you get there so that when they're looking for you, they can actually follow that route. All right, a few more of the basics. Do I have to nominate a SAR time? Absolutely not. RAOs, flights, any of those operations, you don't have to nominate a SAR time. You don't have to talk to anyone about it. You can just launch into the wild blue yonder if you like. So a really, really good idea to do it, though. Now, if you are starting to operate in the GA world and you're doing, uh, say, passenger carrying charter flights or RPT flights then or, or IFR flights, then there will be a requirement to nominate one. But for this being aimed at uh, RAOs type operations, no, you don't have to nominate one. Can I lodge more than one? So can I say, I want to lodge a SAR time for arrival at Boona, a SAR time for arrival at Clifton, a SAR time for arrival at Dolby? No, you can only ever have one active at any one time. So you may need to nominate one for arrival at your first point of landing and then another one for your next point. You can only ever have one SAR time valid at any one time. And that also means... You can't lodge one for today and one for tomorrow preemptively. You can only have one in the system at a time. How do I lodge it? Okay, there's a number of ways you can lodge it. One is NAPES. I'm guessing everybody has a NAPES login, and we're going to look at that shortly. We'll actually run through an example on NAPES of, uh, of actually lodging a SAR time, uh, and, I'll show, and I'll talk you through it. You can do it by phone to 1-800-814-931. You're going to see this number a lot. Uh, during this little discussion, because that's the main number for sensor, for SAR times. So you can ring them up and physically lodge it over the phone. What info do they need? We'll talk about that in a minute. 
EFBs such as I was running, uh, I know they certainly have the function when you put a flight plan in to the system to push a button to lodge that flight plan. Uh, this will give you a bit of a hint of what the rest of the things going on behind the scenes are, but also what it means to you. Apparently you can still do it by fax. Uh, I don't know anyone that has a fax, but you could fill it out and send it in and they'll receive it. And you can do it by radio. Now I said, this is not a good way to win friends and influence people. Um, because there's quite a lot of information you need to give them when you're nominating your SAR time. So they may not want the radio or that particular frequency tied up for minutes by you giving the information to nominate your SAR time. But if it is the only way to do it, if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no phone service out there and there's no fax machine and you haven't got data and you can't get on the NAPES, well, then you can lodge it by radio. Radio is also an awesome way to amend or cancel your SAR time. And there'll be times when you need to amend it. We'll talk about that shortly. But you can get on the radio and just let them know your SAR time and amend it. All right. A few more. How do I amend my SAR time? Good segue into that. You can do it the same way you lodged it. Some of your EFBs will have the ability to do it. NAPES, you can certainly get in, find your active SAR times and amend it. Okay. More likely it'll be by radio and you'll just be calling, say, Brisbane Centre. Um, give them your call sign and your SAR time and amend it, okay, or by phone. All right, now remember, it is really common to amend your SAR time. The coffee took longer to come at the destination, at your midpoint destination, or, you know, you had a flat tyre before departure, or you got chatting to people. That was doing all the time. You're at an airfield, you're chatting. I had a SAR time for arrival. I've been here and had another cup of coffee. I need to get on to make sure it's amended because I don't want it to expire while I'm in flight. Uh, and have Brisbane start looking for me uh, because of an extended flight, a bit, sorry, because I've exceeded my SAR time when it's really just because I was late loading. All right, let's, a few more. What are my SAR time options? Now, I alluded before that we don't need to lodge a, a SAR time at all for our RAL's operations, okay? The most basic option is a flight note. Now, that might be a piece of paper that you leave with your loved ones at home. It might be a piece of paper you leave with the flying school you hired the aircraft from. Uh, that details where you're going and when you expect to be back. Uh, and also write that 1-800 number on that note because what does your wife do when you're not back at the time? Or she can ring triple zero or she can dial into that 1-800 number and straight away is in the system. So uh, a flight note is the, is the first of the ways to do it. You can lodge a SAR time, which is what we're talking about now. You can do a full flight notification form. So you can lodge a full flight plan. That's pretty much what your EFBs are going to do. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this discussion to do a full flight plan and to put that into the system. That's something you need to sit down and go through with your instructor line by line to make sure you nominate it. Those are the ones you'll be nominated by fax too, if you so desire. All right, lodging one. How are we going to lodge a SAR time? Let's have a look at NAPES. I talked about NAPES being a way to do it. Let's look at NAPES and lodge one. All right, I'm here in my, I'm here in my NAPES, all right, in my home section of NAPES, which will look like that. You want to go to the Flight Notification tab. In the Flight Notification tab, you will have the ability to nominate a SAR time. Okay? You will also have Active and Saved. So if you have an active SAR time. We've already lodged one. We would go in here, click on that, and you would find your SAR times. This is where you would go in and click cancel or amend. If I had a SAR time in the system, it'd be listed and I could click amended, amend or, or cancel the SAR time here. How do I actually put one in? You click on SAR time. How simple is that? Aircraft ID. For your RAOS type aircraft, so say you're flying uh, 24-7440. All you need to put in here is 7440. It might be 197440. It might be one of the uh, might be one of the other ones out there. It might be a 16. So 16. All you need to put in is 7440. Don't put the uh, the initial designator in. But also, if you're playing with NAPES and you want to get in and have a practice here, if you put in no send as the aircraft ID. That means while we're playing with this, even if we act, if we click submit, it won't actually submit and have an active SAR time. So if you want to have a practice, a practice and a play with this, put no send in the ID. Aircraft type. 
Aircraft type can be a little bit difficult to find. The aircraft type that you're supposed to put in there is the one designated uh, in ICAO document, uh, what was the actual number of that? ICAO document 8643. So if we go to ICAO document 8643, it lists every single type of aircraft. It could be the good old UH-1 here. UH-1 you'd put in if you're flying an Iroquois, or let's say we're flying a TVM Avenger, or you'd put TVM or TVM-7 for a Cicada. Um, could take you ages to find yours. If you go into ICAO, and the easiest way to find is by Google, if you put ICAO aircraft type designator, it will bring this up. And this is a search. Again, it's from ICAO, so you can search your menu, you can search your designator. If I put in Technam, say we're applying a, a P92, we look down here, Technam P92 is called an Echo. Okay, it might be a P96, they're called a Golf. That's your type designator that you put in. Let's say you're flying a, uh, a Skyfox. Skyfox. Skyfox Gazelle is called a Fox. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you put in there. Or well, let's look up at our Jabaroos. You might be flying a 160. Well, that's a Jab 2 is its type designator. So you find that there, that goes into your aircraft type designator. So let's put our Echo in there. Endurance. We've all been really thorough in our flight planning and we know our endurance. This is a really handy one to have in, in the requirements in the plan, this is not a required, only the highlighted ones here are actually required, all right, but the more info you can give them, the better. So if I put in endurance, let's say I worked out from my flight planning, I had 185 minutes endurance. They know that if 185 minutes has passed since your departure time, you're on the ground somewhere. There is a point where you've landed because you've exceeded your endurance. Persons on board. Oh, sorry, endurance is in hours, hours, minutes, minutes. My fault. So that would be 0305. Three hours, five minutes. It's always in hours, hours, minutes, minutes. My fault. And as you noticed there, when I made a mistake, it brought up, it tells you you've made a mistake, so you can't put the wrong info on board. Okay, this is where you put in people on board. They need to know how many people are in the aircraft. So when they find one survivor, they know they need to look for the other if there was two. Okay, simply put two. If you're doing multiple legs, um, it's a little bit more complex than this. Okay, because um, if you, let's say you're doing three legs, it might be two for the first leg, one for the, one for the second, two for the third. You would put them in with a space between the legs. That's one to sit down with your instructor if you're doing multi-legs and have him show you. Departure, okay, you need to know your departure points. They need to know your departure point and you need to know its correct designator. Let's say you don't know for sure what its designator is. You click on the little uh, my, our little search icon here and it'll bring us up. Let's say we're going, let's say we're going from Redcliffe. Search. Maybe I'll do a quick search for you. Oh look, there it is. Are we going from Redcliffe ALA? If we are, then it's Y-R-E-D. There we go. Let's put it in there. You may have already known that. Now you need your um close that your estimated time of departure. Okay, this needs to be in UTC. So year year, month, month, day, day. So let's go 21 12 27. Hour hour minute minute. Remember again it's in UTC. So let's say our departure time is 0650. Okay, that's the time that we've said we're going to depart. Where is our destination? Same search as we same search as we did before. Okay, in this case, let's make our destination Redcliffe again. Okay, I know it. So this is where we're going. Significant points. Now you need to put one point per line in here. So let's say we're doing one of our training maps. We might be going from Redcliffe to Chinchilla. YCCA. Then we might be going to Kingaroy. Y K R Y. Now you may decide that you're not, even if you're landing there, if you're already going to land, get out of the aircraft for a couple of minutes, get back into the aircraft, you may decide to do this all as one leg. 
but you can see the importance of putting this here because all they know is you're leaving Redcliffe and you're coming back to Redcliffe, but they don't know the route that you're taking. Now, you can also put in here, let's say we're going to a point that doesn't have an airfield, so we're going to overfly an odd point. Um, you can put in there a bearing and distance from a significant point. You can also put a lat long. It's a little bit complicated and a little bit more. It's a little bit complicated, a little bit beyond the scope again of this presentation. The easiest way to do it, if you're going to fly over, let's say there's a dam or, or a significant point you want to fly over that, that isn't an airfield as I've used here, or one of your VFR reporting points, or one of your IFR points, or one of the points on your GPS, you can put in, let's say we're going to go to a point uh, 090 degrees at 025 miles from Kingaroy. So we've just put that in as a point. That is now a significant point that we're flying over. So 090 degrees, 25 miles from Kingaroy. That just gives them the route. An alternate, if you've had to alt nominate an alternate, you might put that in there. You might be having an alternate of Brisbane. Now here is some of the most important info for this. Okay, we need, this is where we're actually nominating that SAR time we talked about. So again, year, year, month, month, day, day in UTC time. Okay, so 21, 1, 2, 2, 7. And now our hour, hour, minute, minute. Yes, I realize this would be at night, but it's just run with the flow. Our SAR time might be 0920. We've worked out our flight plan. We know how long it's going to take us. We might have added about a half hour. I normally add a half hour from my final ETD into there. That is our SAR time. For arrival, we're not going to be doing departure SAR times. They're more for IFR operations. Where is the SAR time for? We've said we're going from Redcliffe to Redcliffe. Do we want to make the SAR time for Kingaroy? Do we want to make the SAR time for something? In this case, let's make it Redcliffe. Okay, so they know we have now nominated a SAR time of that time for our arrival at Redcliffe. Who's the pilot in command? So this is where you need to put the pilot command's name. Billy Bloggs might be doing this flight and his phone number 0422558899. Random phone number, we've put that in there. Okay, so this is the first number that they're going to start to to call and this is Billy Bloggs is the uh, is the pilot in command. This information will come out again in a minute and is very very important. Okay radios, tick what radios you've got. You might have a VHF, you might have an ELT, probably very unlikely you have a UHF but if you have tick that. Other remarks in here you may put white high wing uh, with red stripes so that they can find you. All right, or you may put any other info in there you like. One point I didn't match, if your aircraft type doesn't exist, so let's say in this entire list of aircraft types, you fly something that doesn't exist, it's not in there, then in aircraft type, you put whoop, four Zs. Four Zs tells the system it doesn't exist, and then you need to put down here an aircraft type. You would put type, is adjacent plane, for example. All right, you might put that in there just so that you've listed your type because you needed to put something. They may be able to Google, they might be able to look into that, they might be able to ring someone up and say, What is that? Is it a gyro? What is it? So they can put that in there. There'll be power of parachutes, etc. Don't have this. When all that is done, you can click submit or you can do this the night before, leave these bits blank, and you can save it. So if I click submit, okay, because we've clicked no send, it's not actually going to submit it. But now, okay, that's in invalid significant point. Maybe nothing that exists there. So that would now be in the system. That's our SAR time. Maybe, let's just have a quick look. Maybe that is King Arroy. 090 at 180 miles. Let's try that again, shall we? Submit. I will get back to you on that information. I will get back to you on the exact way to put that in. Now you can see in here, we've got an active SAR time. That will also, sorry, that will also send you an email about your SAR time that you've put in. We look at our active SAR times, it won't be in here because we had a no send. All right, 
So clear as mud, I will get back to you. I will post an amendment in the, in the comments on the correct way to put that significant point in there. I, from memory, that was how you do it, but I need to make sure. A good instructor is always, is always learning. Hey guys, I'm back with that addendum. Uh, just went and did my research, pulled out my uh, VFRG and had a read. Turns out I was almost right with what I was putting in there before. I just put KRY, not YKRY. So if we look at this point here now, that would be bearing 090 at 021 from King Arroy. Um, it's important you use the six figures there. So if we now want to go to another point, let's say uh, YRED275 at 026 miles might be another point. We'll put those in. Then when we click Submit, and note I've still got no send in here. Now when we click Submit, that flight plan is in the system with those points. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. It was very important to me that I cleared that up for you. This is also where you would check that the SAR time that you've put in, okay, is in the system. I hope that cleared it up for you guys. All right, that was a quick look at NAPES. Make sure when they send you an email, you see that uh, that last screen there that you check it, that that is exactly what you said because that's the SAR time that's going to be in the system for you. So make sure you look, make sure you check it. How else can we lodge it? We can lodge it by phone. All of that info that was in there, and, and go back and write that down if you like, uh, all of that info that's in there is what you will need to give them over the phone to lodge your SAR time. You can do it. It's not uncommon to lodge it by phone, especially if you're somewhere where you don't have notes or you've got big fat fingers like I have and you struggle to put that into your phone. I'm not going to go into each individual EFB um, because they're all different. Oz Runways, for example, just has a button to push to lodge the flight plan. Um, you still need to confirm that once you've done that, that your SAR time is correct. And the SAR time that's in the system is going to be the one that saves your life. You can do it by radio. We've already talked about that. Um, they need all of that information that we just went through on that flight plan. So you need to have it all written down. And you're going to be reading that out over the radio. So that will annoy them. But if it's the difference between lodging and not lodging, go ahead and lodge it that way. Who do I lodge it to? What info do they need? I just covered that. Who are we lodging it to? Probably Brisbane Centre. Um, there will be some other frequencies. And if you say to Centre, they may give you another discrete frequency to lodge it on. So times in the system, how do I cancel it? You can cancel it by NAPES, but you can't cancel it by your EFB. None of the EFBs I've seen have a cancel SAR time function in them. Uh, you go into NAPES, click on it, and click cancel. Okay but not your EFB. Who can cancel a SAR time? If I don't cover it in a minute, you can also cancel it by radio and telephone. Who can cancel a SAR time? This is why we put that pilot and command in there. Only the pilot and command or sensor, the organization, can cancel your SAR time. You cannot cancel someone else's SAR time. You can't ring up sensor and say, oh, I noticed that Technion 7440 has landed at Redcliffe. I don't think he canceled his SAR time. Can you cancel that for him? Or you can't, you can't ring up and cancel for the other aircraft that just landed ahead of you or that was in the formation with you. Only the pilot in command can cancel it. And that's pretty obvious. I mean, they may have landed yet intend to get in the aircraft and go for another fly thinking they're still covered by the same SAR time and, and you've cancelled it for them. So only you or Sensar, if they discover that you are safe and well, can cancel that SAR time. No one else can. The preferred method of cancelling it. 1-800-814-931. Give it a call. Let them know who you are and say, yeah, it's it's Jason from Fly Now. I've got a SAR time in the system for Tech Name 7440 for arrival at Roma. I've landed Roma. Cancel SAR. That's all you need to say. They don't want a long-winded method. This can be pretty... Oh, sorry, they don't want a long-winded conversation. This can be pretty busy on this, uh, on this phone line. There can be a lot of people ringing up, people ringing up urgently needing to amend them. The magic words you need to hear are SAR watch terminated or SAR time terminated or SAR time cancelled. Those are the three options you'll be given. You need to hear that. Uh, if you don't hear one of those, ring them up. Uh, sorry, just say, hey, just confirm you've cancelled that because your SAR time may still be in the system. You can also cancel it by VHF. Uh, you, may, you may call up centre and say, uh, I have a SAR time for arrival Dolby. Uh, Technium 7440 has landed Dolby Cancel SAR. They will then say to you, Dolby SAR, watch terminate. 
again, you need to hear that phrase. Now I've included this little guy here. Okay, we see our maps every we see our maps every year. We see our maps all the time. We see this little lightning bolt beside the air. There's our airfield there beside the airfield name. That lightning bolt says to you, you will have VHF comms with the nominated area on the ground. Now it may be if it didn't have that there. Let's say we're going to Dobby and didn't have that little lightning flash. You might be able to get comms in the circuit. Have a flick through Ursa. Ursa will tell you. You might need to cancel it in the circuit if you don't have phone contact on the ground. There at Dolby, you know if you can't get phone on the ground, at least you can still get in the aircraft, cancel it by radio. So that's what the little lightning lightning bolt means. Okay, some handy tips. Set an alarm on your phone for five minutes before your SAR time expires. That way when you've landed, you've got out of the aircraft, you've forgotten to cancel your SAR, you're in the crew, brew room having a coffee, Having a good old chat, the alarm goes off, you go, oh my God, I forgot to cancel my SAR. You can ring them up and cancel it. Okay, set it on your iPad. Set it somewhere because you don't want to let this thing expire, uh, especially when you're safely on the ground. Okay, what happens if I forgot to cancel my SAR time? Oh my God, I've forgotten to cancel my SAR time. It was 20 minutes ago and I've forgotten to cancel it. Straight away, get on that phone, ring them up. Okay, 1-800-814-931. Get on the phone and say, I had a SAR time for arrival, Roma of of 0004 and I've forgotten to cancel it and they'll cancel it again jump on the VHF this is important that you do it as soon as you recognize pull your car over on the M1 on the way home in a safe place make that phone call straight away you've screwed up you need to fix it you need to fix it urgently and don't do it again it's a very very big deal because they will be looking for you be prepared to get a lecture from the CFI be prepared to get a lecture from the guy on the end of the phone because the chances are someone is already looking for you. They may even have aircraft in the air looking for you if it's been too long. You didn't do it. You're not the only person to do it. Over 900 people a year forget to cancel their SAR time. Don't be one of them. However, as far as I've been able to determine, and having forgotten to cancel a SAR time, providing you don't make a habit of it, they don't charge you for it. All right, You're not going to get a bill for the search and rescue helicopter. You're not going to get a bill for the 800 phone calls and the time taken looking for you. It's better that you put a SAR time in and forget than be too scared to lodge one and don't get rescued. All right, Don't be scared. Put one in. If you're too scared to lodge it, you have an accident and die from a survivable accident because no one was looking for you because you were too scared to put a SAR time in. That would be pretty silly. All right. Where to from here? That was fast. It was comprehensive. Um but it explained how to put a SAR time in and what it's all about. Talk to your instructor if you need more help. Uh, talk to your instructor if you need more info. They will help you out. Please feel free to give me a yell. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you want any more info. Always use a SAR time and always remember to cancel it.